it has jokes in it. I mean, not jokes. It's funny. I mean, it's like, look, it's a it's a big stew of things. We made it. We wanted to make a movie that felt accidental and that could make use of a mess to move people. So, like, is it a drama? Sure. Right? It's like there's serious things in it. Are, are there is are there comedic things? Sure. People laugh. Like, it's a big grab bag. I don't think we were thinking of the movie in those terms. I don't think we ever said those like, words. Yeah. Interestingly, it's like it wasn't about that. It's not. It was about. Uh, each part of the movie, each segment of the movie, uh, was interested in producing a feeling or a set of feelings. And those feelings, b because of how the movie was built, had to be very specific. So it wasn't like, this is a serious part. It was like, this is the part when a dying man's in the house, but like, holy shit, please die. Or, this is a scene about sex, but it's the most unromantic, like, unsexy sex scene in the history of cinema. Or, this is a scene about people having brunch that's about intimacy and a collection of heads around a table and the feeling of kind of being insulated by a family. So, like, we were interested in kind of building a structure out of these emotional ingredients that could, like, accumulate one on top of the other in, in, a, in a real progression towards the pot boiling over, towards a kind of cathartic climax, you know? And, and I do remember something that will help... Uh give borders to your to the to your question to, we were only as funny i mean it's not a comedy let's just get that right out there. <laughs> but we were only as funny or dramatic as we thought that life was so i do recall when there was an occasional time where a one liner would end up in there we would say that's too much outside the boundaries of the kind of uh, intentional chaos that we were uh, designing. And in fact, any, any time dialogue at all became became structural, became, any time dialogue seemed to carry any weight whatsoever in a scene, it was like, pay attention to that, because like, if you're doing that, make sure that that's the right call. I, I, I don't even know how many times that happens in the well, movie. Well, it was a funny part of the process, which was sometimes we would write the scene knowing this is what a normal movie would do, just to see, like, oh, she's feeling that, he's feeling that, and then we would blow all that away and see if it could just be underneath and subtextual. But sometimes we we went through the emotional beat by beat, uh, aloud or even on paper sometimes. Dialogue is behavior, and and with, you know, if a character's frustrated and says they're frustrated, like, I think we uh, all... Who gives a shit? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, but if a character's frustrated and says, like, I love you, then it's uh, then you have a scene or something. If, if the audience knows what is going on in the situation, then they don't have to hear anybody say it. You stay away from that. And so the crinoline, that, that's a term Russ came up with for the thing that holds a scene or a movie up, but specifically a scene, we would always be aware that if the audience knows these two people are fighting or uncomfortable with each other or desirous of each other, that's all we need. Then yeah. what they say is, is you know, I think the, a phrase that we said a couple of times was, I think Pinter said, the dialogue is what we you, people use to clothe their nakedness. It's not really, uh, it, when it becomes a, a, a direct line to what they feel, it sucks. Yeah. And there was, you know, a lot of our work was about, like, for instance, there's a character goes and... Um, someone who's not his girlfriend when his dad is dying and then he comes back to the house and literally we just watch him make dinner with his family in a wide shot and that has a certain amount of dramatic tension to it because you've just been a part of him betraying someone he loves the movie a lot of our work together was finding those kinds of um, dramatic accumulations where you didn't have to do much work as a writer if you pick the right circumstance so that like uh, so, so that you could slam scenes up against each other in such a way that, that the, the, the audience would, would kind of lean into it and get hooked by it without there being any need for, for dialogue to kind of catch it.